Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Compline tonight. It's good to be home. We've had a lovely holiday to Newfoundland and Labrador. I hope you've been having some time to enjoy this lovely summer weather we've been having. So welcome to Compline. I'm glad you joined me tonight on this, the 11th Sunday already after Pentecost. I hope you have your order of service. Let's just take a moment and quieten our hearts in the understanding that wherever we find ourselves, God by his spirit is with us. Let's begin. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Our psalm tonight is taken from that wonderful psalm, Psalm 105, and we'll say it responsibly by the verse. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen. Then he called for a famine in the land and destroyed the supply of bread. He sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They bruised his feet in fetters. His neck they put in an iron collar. Until his prediction came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him. The rulers of the people set him free. He set him as master over his household, as a ruler over all his possessions, to instruct his princes according to his will, and to teach his elders wisdom. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our reading for tonight is the second reading for this Sunday, taken from Paul's letter to the church in Rome. And Paul writes, Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified. And one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have not never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Here ends the lesson. Thanks be to God. We have tonight the Apostle Paul, brilliant, highly trained Pharisee, expert in the law. And we see him, I think, in the fullest flower of his, of his writing power. The letter to the Romans, it is so full of depth, so complex. And there's much here we could talk about. But let me zero in on just one thing. If there's ever a bottom line in Christianity about what it means to be a Christian, it's found here. Before the Nicene Creed, even before the Apostles' Creed, 
the earliest Christian creed was just three words. And you can find them embedded several times in Paul's writing. The earliest Christian creed was just three words, Jesus is Lord. Now, if you try to understand, what does it mean, Jesus is Lord? Well, the, Lord, the, the word Lord that we have in English translates what Paul wrote in Greek, kyrios. And to understand what Paul is getting at, you need to look back two centuries before Jesus, when the Hebrew scriptures were translated into Greek. The word for God, Yahweh, the personal name for God, was translated from the Hebrew into Greek as Kyrios. So when Paul says Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Kyrios, Jesus is Yahweh, he is making the, the statement that in Jesus you have truly God with us, God in flesh among us. So here is the irreducible minimum. Here's what it means to be a Christian. If you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. There it is. Jesus, resurrected from the dead. If you believe that, and you confess that, that God raised him from the dead, and he's Lord, you will be saved. And then he goes on, no one who believes in Jesus will be put to shame. And then he says, everyone who calls upon the Lord shall be saved. A number of months ago, a member of the Church of the Ascension said to me, you know, the word belief is not intellectual assent. It's trust. And that's what the word in the original meant. No one who trusts in Jesus will be put to shame. Everyone who calls on him shall be saved. What a great, great promise to us. As I've come back, even in the last couple of days, I've understood that there are some among us who are in real suffering. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. He hears and he'll answer. You may have wondered about the psalm tonight. Well, you need to recognize that the psalms in the liturgy are a reflection on the Old Testament reading. In the Old Testament reading for today, we find Joseph who, after the threat of murder, was sold as a slave, human trafficking, then imprisoned, falsely accused of sexual assault, and yet God intervened in his suffering and saved him. So there it is. All who trust in him will not be put to shame. They'll be saved, for Jesus is Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Join me in the response to you. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For thou hast redeemed me, O Lord, thou God of truth. I commend my spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. And this wonderful, ancient, lovely hymn. Let's say it together. O oh, gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O oh, Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O oh God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O oh, Son of God, O oh, giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Amen. Keep us as the apple of an eye, hide us under the shadow of thy wings. And let us say together this great anthem, preserve us, O Lord, waking and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Lord, now let us thou, thy servant, depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Preserve us, O Lord, waking, and guard us sleeping, 
that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. And let us confess our faith, our trust in Jesus, by saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Blessed art thou, Lord God of our fathers, to be praised and glorified above all forever. Let us bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us praise him and magnify him forever. Blessed art thou, O Lord, in the firmament of heaven, to be praised and glorified above all forever. The Almighty and most merciful Lord, guard us and give us his blessing. Amen. And yes, at the end of the day, how good it is to come to our Father, to confess what we've done and said and thought that was wrong, and find perfect forgiveness and absolution. So let us confess our faith. Let us confess our sins together. We confess to God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed through our own grievous fault. Wherefore, we pray God to have mercy upon us. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us all our sins and deliver us from all evil. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to life everlasting through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant unto you pardon and remission of all your sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wilt thou not turn again in quickness, that thy people may rejoice in thee? O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this night without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come unto thee. The, the collect of the day for this, the eleventh Sunday after Pentecost. Almighty God, you sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church. Open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love, joy, and peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God of compassion, you hear the cries of all who are in trouble or distress. Accept our prayers for those whose lives are affected by storms, flooding, and wildfires. Strengthen them in their hour of need. Grant them perseverance and courage to face the future and be to them a firm foundation on which to rebuild their lives. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, who would fold both heaven and earth in a single peace, let the design of thy great love lighten upon the waste of our wraths and sorrows, and give peace to thy church, peace among nations, peace in our dwellings, and peace in our hearts. Through thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. O God, almighty and merciful, who healest those that are broken in heart, 
and turnest the sadness of the sorrowful to joy. Let thy fatherly goodness be upon all that thou hast made, remembering pity such as are this day destitute, homeless, or forgotten. Bless the poor, uplift those who are cast down, mightily befriend innocent sufferers, and sanctify to them the endurance of their wrongs. Though they may be troubled on every side, suffer them not to be distressed. Though they be perplexed, save them from despair. Grant this, O Lord, for the love of him who for our sakes became poor, thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we cannot ever forget to pray for those we know who are suffering, who need God's healing grace. Almighty and immortal God, the giver of all life and health, we beseech thee to hear our prayers for thy servants who are ill, for whom we implore thy mercy. And I invite you in the silence to follow, to name before God, either silently or aloud, those who are in your heart and mind this night. That by thy healing, but that by thy blessing upon them, and upon those who minister to them of thy healing gifts, they may be restored according to thy gracious will, to health of body and mind, and give thanks to thee in thy holy church. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now be with us in our homes, O Lord, and let your holy angels dwell therein to preserve us in peace. And let your blessing rest ever upon us, O thou o Lord of love, who lives forever and ever. Amen. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now spent. We will lay us down in peace and take our rest. For it is thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. The Lord be with thee and with thy spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me tonight. It is good to be back. And I pray that our Lord will indeed walk with you every moment of this week to, to come. So until we meet again, good night, and God bless you.